Hello! Happy Thanksgiving to anybody and everybody uh, celebrating that today, or not. Either way, hope you're having a lovely day. If you're going to do a little funny video, um, this will have some spoilers for Pokemon uh, Scarlet and Violet in case you haven't already beaten the game in full. Um, but I just beat the game uh, the other day after playing it for like five or six days straight, pretty much, uh, with a few friends on Discord. Um, and uh, thanks to uh, Germ and Michaela, I was able to secure uh, pretty much all of the... Uh, primal and future Pokemon that you get uh, in the um, the Area Zero kind of final uh, Made in Abyss for Kids trademark <laughs> area uh, towards the end of the game. And I did something a little uh, funny that I thought was kind of clever and I wanted to share with everybody. So if you've uh, gotten them by this point, you'll know that they have um, kind of more uh, descriptive names like uh, Iron Treads and, uh, you know, metal thorns or, or whatever. Um, and uh, I don't remember what all of them are off the top of my head, but I thought it would be kind of funny is uh, if they were kind of contemporized into uh, Pokemon in the present day, and if they were classified with the types of names that you would expect uh, Pokemon creatures to usually have. So I tried to kind of think, to, to engineer names... Uh, sort of in the style of how Game Freak would do it. Um, to what level of success, I'm not sure. I guess you guys be the judge of that, but I'll go through each of the ones that I got. Um, so, first there's the uh, Primal uh, Vulcanian. Uh, so, of course, it's a combination of uh, the god Vulcan, uh, as well as uh, uh, Corona, uh, Vol uh, Volcarona originally is. Um, and so, since this one is, uh, is originally Slitherwing, and it's more focused on the, the wings, um, I thought instead of Corona, uh, Aileron, uh, which is, of course, a sort of flying term, so Volcaileron, and of course I spelled it a little bit weirdly to make it a little more corrupted in that sense, so Volcaileron we have at a Slitherwing. We have, uh, Great Tusk, the Primal Donphan, uh, and since, uh, the tusks are the kind of main focus of this, uh, particular guy, um, I changed it to from Don Fan with a PH like Don, Don you know, the, the fan being, you know, like elephant, uh, to Don Fang, of course, uh, to emphasize the kind of uh, pun with that as well. Uh, Mischievous, uh, the Fluttermane, the primal Mischievous Fluttermane, uh, I changed to Mandrevis, uh, the Miss part, I can't think, came more from the uh, mystical and maybe even the Miss kind of thing, since I, th I think that these are primarily female, like, uh, I had to check my homework on that, but, uh, uh, yeah, I went with mane, because, of course, it's more focused on the crazy, winged kind of parts of its hair and everything, so mane dravis, pretty simple one there. He's just so unhappy, he just does not want to be here. <laughs> um, next we have, uh, the Brute Bonnet, which is the primal Amoongus, uh, and as he's got this kind of uh, brush kind of uh, overlapping his head and everything. I thought a brushus, um, kind of similar to uh, abrasive, a uh, little bit kind of in that sense, and he's kind of angry looking, so felt uh, that was a simple enough one. Okay, this one is funny, and I'm actually pretty proud of this. This is the uh, primal uh, Jigglypuff, of course, which, uh, so of course, there's Igglybuff, Jigglypuff, and Wigglytuff, so to keep with that sort of name scheme sound, uh, I called this Squeakly Off. Uh, because, of course, he has, uh, it's called Scream Tail, uh, so it's technically uh, a tail and not hair, I suppose, but the, the hair sort of thing is uh, is kind of squeakly looking, and there's just something off about a vampiric Jigglypuff, so I felt that it was uh, appropriate enough of a name uh, for perhaps the Pokemon professors to classify them as. And then we have the Roaring Moon, uh, which I call, so of course it's uh, Salamence, uh, which is a cross between uh, salamander and violence, or intense. Um, and so I, uh, since the, the moon shape of its wings uh, I thought would be interesting. I, I, I think originally I went with uh, Salamoon or Sal Salamunder, but I thought Salamundra sounded really cool, so I went with that. A little bit of a liberty there. Uh, not pictured, I, one that I did miss was the Primal Magneton, which I called uh, Piezaton. Um, since uh, Magnemite, Magnezone, and... Uh, uh, Magneton, uh, we're all kind of shared in that way, um, since they're true magnets, and the, uh, the, um, I forget what it's called, the, uh, I think it's like shock something, it's like shock sparks, I forget exactly, 
it's um, I wanted with that one to focus more on the piezo field um, kind of thing, like the iron filings and all that stuff. So I went with, but it still looks like magneton. So I kept the ton part. Uh, and replace the magnet part with piezo, so it's piezo ton. So a little simple for that one. And on to the future ones. The Iron Moth. Of course, we have the uh, future version of Volcarona. Uh, so I went with uh, Volca Robotic. Uh, there was just enough characters to fit on that. Felt figured it was, uh, um, you know, fitting enough to. The, this uh, Michaela pointed out this thing looks like something that Doctor Eggman would have built in like a more modern Sonic game. Um, I love the design of this thing, by the way. Uh, I love every version of Volcarona. Uh, funnily enough, I currently I don't have the regular present version of Volcarona captured. I have the the past and the future versions of it, uh, but not the present, which is sad and ironic. But uh, you know, yeah, Volcarona and uh, Don Fan are the only two that seem to have a past, present, and future version of them now uh, after this. And of course, uh, the first one that I got, because <coughs> this is one of the Titans that I had to get in the Violet version, uh, was Iron Treads, which of course is the uh, future version of Don Fan. So, um, with this, uh, because it's made of iron, and I spelled it a little bit weirdly, uh, Iron Fan, uh, which also is after Iron Fan, which is a, uh, a Journey to the West uh, Sayuki reference that's a little bit also of a creative liberty. But, uh, so I kept the fan part in this case, uh, as opposed to I wanted to have them be a little bit um, differentiated from the, the other version. So, uh, I also love this. I want a toy of this thing, like, really bad. Uh, Hariyama! Uh, the future Hariyama, uh, which is one of my favorite Pokemon designs, funnily enough, and I love the design of this thing, too. This is, Maybe because this is, like, the type of uh, design that I would like to make. I love I, when I design, like, when I design robot-type characters and stuff. So, as it is one of the rare Pokemon that has a Japanese-style name, I don't remember, I think it might, I think Hariyama might have a slightly different name in the Japanese version, I can't quite recall, but I figured that a Japanese-style one for this would still be okay. So I called it Haganayama, uh, which of course is uh, the steel, um, uh, the, the Japanese word for steel, uh, Hagane. So I kept the, starting with the, with the letter H, um, but replaced Hari with Hagane, so Haganayama. So there you go. So, and, and which I believe it, uh, means uh, steel mountain, because I, I think that Yama means mountain, if I'm remembering correctly, uh, or I can mean mountain. So uh, and it certainly looks like it, so it fits quite well. All right, this thing. Uh, the Iron Jugulus, uh, which is, of course, the future Hydreigon, uh, Hy Hydreigon, um, and I felt, uh, quite simple, it looked very cybernetic and stuff, so, uh, Hydreicon, uh, kind of in the style of, like, Transformers, uh, type of names, you know, the Minicons, the Decepticons, and that kind of thing, so, simple. I love the grid texture, the, it's hard to see, unless you're close up, but the very, like, uh, um, kind of cyber world uh, uh, grid texture that's on, and, and also the kind of sparkly stuff on the the pink um, sort of texture as well. Uh, the, the textures in this game in general are, are really cool looking. I, I like the little finesses that they add. Uh, here we are, uh, Iron Bundle, the future uh, Deli Bird. Uh, quite simple. Uh, went with Deli Borg. Um, kept the delivery part uh, since the bundle is uh, you know talking about the. Uh, thing that it stores uh, stuff in the little uh, container that it has, and I changed Bird to Borg because he's us. I mean, technically not a cyborg, still the robot, but uh, just felt oh, I didn't want to go with robot too often for some of these names. Um, I don't want to repeat the same kind of joke with every single thing. But uh, and last but not least, I'm very proud of this one. So this was the the I believe the di most difficult to get uh, of these in Violet. Uh, so Iron Valiant. Uh, looking closely, it's a bit of a combination of both, uh, Gallade and, uh, Gardevoir. So, in wanting to incorporate both of those things, and also wanting to have an element of the roboticness to it, I went with Galdetron. So, the, you know, Gallade, Gardevoir, and Tron for the, you know, the robot thing, and it kind of sounds like Galvatron from Transformers, which was a cute little reference, of course. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, uh, I like these. I, there's a selfish part of me that kind of wants to, like, popularize these as colloquial sort of names, but, I mean, that's not up for me to magically decide. Um, but I don't know. If you like these names, uh, use them, because, uh, I kind of want to just biz casually call them that, because I like them. Um, which, and by the way, and just say that, to, to, to speak to that, that's not any disrespect. I, I do think it was an interesting idea that these kind of mysterious um, Pokemon from other time periods that we would not normally have access to, minus 
um, you know, again, spoiler, the uh, professor of the respective games traveling to those times and perhaps, uh, you know, or, or whoever it was that was writing the, the Scarlet Book and the Violet Book um, and, you know, noting down these different things about... Um, these uh, these Pokemon in just very broad sort of terms. I think creatively that is very interesting. I was very surprised when I saw that uh, the the um, the future Don fam, which was the first of them that I encountered, um, was just called a thing with two uh, words. I was like, oh, that's di very different for Pokemon. But after like Type Null, I figured like, well, I mean, you know, they can break the rules. Um, I guess if you're curious. Oh, and I'll even get to this last one. I forgot one more, of course. Uh, uh, Whoopsie. Oh, there's me. Hi. <laughs> I'll show you out here then, I guess. Um, so, uh, Tyranitar. I didn't want to repeat Robo too often, but Tyrobotar was just too perfect with it for the name that, for the way that the name was set up, so I went with that, of course. <laughs> um, and uh, this was my team, if you're curious. Uh, I love the Baxcalibur evolution line. The second that I saw, like, wait, there's like an ice stegosaurus thing that turns into a space Godzilla? Oh, I need that, like, immediately. So I, I got it, pumped it full of rare candies, and evolved it, and uh, I needed Flaw, of course, which is an, a bit of an ice pun. Um, my uh, Cerul Edge, which I named Zero, because, I mean, you know, just look at him. <laughs> Uh, Claude Sire, who I love, and he's such a tanky boy, he's so good. Uh, I named him Venom, like, like a sort of baby talk way of saying Venom. Uh, so I went with him, he's great. Um, Spidops, the bug Pokemon in this are great. If any of you guys saw on my Twitter, my first, uh, shiny that I caught was a, uh, Lokix, which was the, uh, Locust kind of, uh, warrior Pokemon. Um, but I caught a, um... Uh, the, the, the Tarantula, I think it was, the pre-evolution to this. And I just liked him, wanted to see what he turned into, and so I called uh, I called him Scythe, um, Spide Ops, uh, who's served me very well. He's kind of an all-rounder guy with a bunch of different types. And, of course, I chose Quaxley, you know, the underrated duck lad, uh, and my Quaquavel uh, eventually evolved, and I named him Donald because, you know, I'm very uncreative like that. So, <laughs> um, while I have you, um, yeah, I love this game. Glitches and all, I don't even care. This is the best experience I've ever had playing a Pokemon game, and I've been a fan for 25 years, I think. What is it now that it's been going on for? I, I love this series, and I love this game so much. It was so much fun to play with the others, uh, and I hope you all out there enjoyed it too. Consider this kind of my... Uh, fill in for doing a curb log review. I thought this would be something kind of cute and funny to do in, in place of that. But uh, yeah, so happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Thanks for watching, and uh, gotta catch them all. Bye bye!